introduce you to something that has become a trusted, faithful companion over the past few months as I launched my company and my YouTube channel. It's Marie Kondo in my office bookshelf, and to this day, it still sparks joy as it sits on my desk. It's almost converted me from being an Android user to an Apple fangirl. And no, it's not this $100 pencil, it's this $10 app. Notability. While the first place in my heart for a productivity tool will always be reserved for Notion, Notability takes close second, and for some, it might be all you need. But there are a lot of options out there, so I want to share my thought process of choosing this app with all of you. In this video, I'm going to be going over the criteria that I had when choosing the perfect note-taking iPad app, the features about Notability that made me choose it, and my personal setup. So grab some coffee or chai and let's get to it. Okay, so after buying that pencil and digging up an old iPad from home, I had to figure out which note-taking app to dish out my $10 to. And of course, I had some criteria. First, the app itself should be aesthetic. I know, what else can you expect from a young millennial? But for real, if I want to make this investment worth it, I should be excited to look at this app every single day. In the past, I've dabbled with bullet journals, which have the same promise of a minimalist, customizable look and feel that's supposed to inspire you to use them. But my notes soon became illegible mush as I progressively became more lazy about maintaining them. So I want to find an app that's beautiful, but also easy to keep beautiful. Along those lines, the app should have a phenomenal writing experience. Generally, writing things by hand is a lot more time consuming than typing, especially after you've maximized your typing speed after years of school and tech jobs. So the app should compel me to want to write things by hand. It should magically transform my subpar handwriting into beautiful calligraphy. And it should offer ample customization options from pretty pastel highlighters to bold neon pens. Lastly, I want to be both organized but also easy to navigate. If you take a look at how I organize my computer, it's what I like to call organized chaos. I separate most of my documents into folders. For YouTube, it's by video, and for my business, it's by student. So I wanted something that would provide some structure to my notes, but not so much structure where the nesting of folders within folders within folders in the name of organization would just feel like a barrier. So after establishing this wish list, I did some researching on what the heck was out there, and ultimately I narrowed down my search to two contenders, Notability and GoodNotes. So let's see how these two fared with my three criteria. As far as which was more aesthetic, Notability took the lead. I liked the all-white color scheme and minimal toolbar on each note. Everything about the overall user experience is simple and intuitive. And one way that I achieve this consistent look is by using the scissors tool. With this, you can select a part of your page and duplicate Duplicate, cut, copy, or delete it. I use this a lot when designing my recipe box app to make an even grid of images or to replicate wireframes. And I use this in my yearly calendar to quickly make a new monthly spread. And in terms of the writing experience, again, notability inched ahead. There are nearly infinite possibilities when it comes to how you want to format your handwriting. You can select from a range of thicknesses, pen style, and color. And all of the pre-selected colors they give you work super well with each other. But of course, you can also add your own. The writing experience also encompasses everything else that you can add to a page that your handwriting can complement. And to that end, I really love the flexibility of Notability's embed feature, which would have been a lifesaver in college. So back when I was in college, the professor would project slides to the front of the room, which were available online as a PDF. Then they write stuff on the whiteboard, which I'd take pictures of but never be able to find when it actually mattered. They'd also distribute handouts to take notes on, which I eventually ended up stuffing into my desk drawer. But with this embed feature, I could have uploaded those slides, those whiteboard diagrams, and those scanned handouts all onto a single note. But alas, I found this app five years too late. And in terms of the organization, you guessed it, I chose Notability as well. So back in the day, we used to use paper in school. I know, it's shocking. Every morning, I'd stuff a bunch of binders into my backpack, one for each subject. Within each binder, I had several colorful dividers for each separate unit. Within each divider was a stack of hole punch papers, added chronologically as I received them. And Notability pretty much follows that same exact structure, so it's incredibly intuitive and easy to get used to. Now, you may be wondering, What about Notion? Why do you need Notability if you have Notion? 
And don't worry, Notion is still my number one. For most things like curating my YouTube content, writing scripts, managing my business, etc., I love using Notion. But Notability has been creeping in as my secret side love. Specifically, it's been of use for two major things. One of the things I've set up on my iPad is a pseudo bullet journal. Even though I keep a version of a to-do list on Notion, I find myself never reaching for it. And that's because I always end up carrying over tasks from one day into the other. So after a while, looking at my to-do list just feels super overwhelming. But with Notability, every day I create a new to-do list from scratch. Starting fresh each day feels so liberating and helps me clear my mind to decide how I want to dedicate my time. Besides the daily view, I've also recently started planning out months at a time in this 2020 calendar. Since I work for myself, this helps me see at a glance the major upcoming events in my life, such as trips home or travel, so I can plan my work around them. And this helps me allocate each day for different activities, so I can separate my time and my mind between filming, editing, marketing, coding, writing, etc. And if I change my mind and just want to spend the day watching Netflix, I can just rearrange these cards. And the great thing is that this is super easy to reproduce. All I have to do is just copy and paste a month to create the next month's spread. Since I now have a paperless office, using my iPad has become really useful when planning out my coding projects. In the past, I've used it to create lists of ideas for my next app, to map out technical requirements, and even to draw out full out wireframe designs. This proved to be the most useful and inspiring for my recipe box project. Using Notability, I was able to make a very simple mock-up where I could combine a bunch of different elements to realize the potential of my app. For example, I found a picture of a chicken tikka masala recipe online, and I added that photo to my page to show how a recipe image would look like on my app. I also used this to design both my personal website and my company Haiku's website. Especially when it comes to design, nothing beats starting off with pen and paper except maybe Notability. With this app, I've ditched all my previous notebooks and fancy gel pens in favor of keeping everything here in one place. So I also have a hodgepodge of random notes, one for a roommate meeting, another for mapping out my dream garden, and another to teach my brother Python data structures. And that's it for this week's video. I hope this inspired you to spice up your note-taking game or take the plunge into using one of these productivity systems. And I'm always on the lookout for the next best app. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.